My new base iPad finally arrived and I'm going to pull it out of this box and show you how I set it up to suit me. If you'd like to just get your iPad and all its apps arranged so using it becomes second nature, then this video is for you. Once you get your iPad set up to your liking, you'll be whipping around screens like it's nobody's business. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Rich, and if you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. I make videos for beginners and seniors on how to use their iPhones and iPads. I've got links to a whole series of iPhone videos in the description below. Check them out. And by the way, most of my videos are pretty short and to the point. I don't want to make them so complicated that they're overwhelming and of no use to anyone wanting to learn the basics. If mastering the basics is something you want to do and you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel grow. And if there's a particular video topic you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. So in today's video, I'm going to give you five quick iPad setup tips, and then I'm going to give you one bonus tip. First, I'm going to show you how to connect to Wi-Fi, then how to set up Control Center, how to put your favorite apps in the dock, how to add a widget to your home screen, which will really make your iPad useful and how to make sure your iPad software is up to date. And finally, the bonus tip is I'm gonna show you how to set up Touch ID if you have a base iPad like I do. Okay, first tip I wanna show you is how to connect to Wi-Fi. So during the setup process, you typically have to enter your username and password to connect up to your Wi-Fi. And if you've done that, that's fine. But every now and then you don't know what it is or you forget it and you need to go look it up and you just go ahead and continue with the setting up your iPad without connecting to Wi-Fi or Maybe, I don't know, your Wi-Fi goes down and you need to reconnect. So this is how you do it. The first thing you do is you go to settings and you've got a whole bunch of settings here and you tap on Wi-Fi and you make sure Wi-Fi is turned on like that. And then it'll start searching for all of the networks that you have around. Uh, and you can set it up to auto connect. I didn't set it up that way here so that you would um, be able to see what I'm doing. But I'm going to tap on my Wi Fi network, and there I'm connected. It may be that when you tap on your uh, Wi Fi network, it's going to ask for a password. So make sure you know how to enter your password. Once you've entered your password and you're connected, you can tap on the little I, make sure auto join is turned on. And that way, um, it'll just automatically connect back when, you, when you've gotten disconnected or when you tap on uh, your Wi-Fi network. So it's pretty simple, it's, but you need to be able to do that. And so that is how you connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, the next tip I want to show you is how to set up Control Center. So Control Center is your friend. If you're like my mother, um, you know, she's trying to turn the volume up using the rockers on the side and occasionally she'll press the on off button on the top of it and it's just frustrating. But you don't have to do it that way. You can, um, you can use Control Center to set it up and how you access Control Center is you simply swipe down from the top right like that and here's Control Center and if you notice you've got a brightness button you just tap on it and you can raise and lower the brightness of your screen and over here you can do the volume up and down on the screen and that is much much easier so if you're watching a YouTube video like this one and the sound isn't uh, loud enough for you just simply swipe down from the right and then slide your finger up and down until you get the volume the way that you want it to be now you can set up control center to contain other things too and how you do that is you go to settings and you go down to Control Center. And then here are the things that are already in. It says included controls right there. But maybe you want to put something else in there, like a quick note. So if you add that, now a quick note is up here. And if you go back to Control Center, you'll see that a quick note has been added. And you can tap on that and then just enter your note, type in whatever you want to type in, and then click Done. And that's how you add a quick note. And that's all done from Control Center. And I would encourage you to take time and go through the various things that are over here, and you can add things and take them away. 
uh, out of control center. So take your time and look through here and see what, uh, what you'd like to put in there. But that is how you set up control center. And, and I'm telling you, control center is your friend, if nothing more than for the volume control. Most people have cases on their iPads and it's just hard to turn that volume thing up and down. Plus you get the, you get the iPad turned upside down or whatever. So all you gotta do is just swipe from the top right to get to control center and you've got your volume control. That one tip alone is worth using control center. All right, the next thing I wanna show you is how to set up your dock. The dock is what is down here along the bottom of the screen. And you can put different apps in your dock. And you can take apps out of your dock. So if you press and hold on the screen, everything will start jiggling right there. And maybe you wanna take out that one and you just click. You can delete the app or you can remove it from your home screen. I don't wanna delete the app. That takes it completely off the iPad. I just wanna remove it from the home screen. So I'm gonna tap remove from home screen and now it's gone. If you wanna add an app back to the dock, all you do is you just tap on your app library icon and all your apps come out and you can again tap and hold and everything starts jiggling and then you just move your finger on that and you drag it down and you put it in the dock and you press your home button or tap the screen again and now you've got that set up and I would encourage you to take your most frequently used apps and put them in the dock maybe your mail maybe YouTube, uh, maybe photos. You wanna be able to look at your photos from time to time. And that way you don't have to go over here and try to find it on the screen. You just have it in your dock. And you can set up your dock to your liking. And that's how you do that. All right, now I wanna talk about adding a widget to the home screen. So a widget is something different than an icon and it can provide you a little more information on uh, any particular topic or something that the app deals with. So let me show you how to do that. You can press, and now everything starts jiggling like before, but up here in the top left corner is a little plus button. And if you hit that plus button, now you have a stack of widgets here. I like to kind of keep the weather on my home screen. So I'm gonna slide down here to weather and you can scroll across for different sizes. I think I'm gonna use that size right there and I'm gonna click add widget. And now, and then you tap the screen again and it's set. Now, if you wanna change the location, this one says Myrtle Beach and I'm not sure why because I don't live in Myrtle Beach. I visit Myrtle Beach, but I don't live there. But if you wanna edit that and put your own hometown, you can press on it and click Edit Widget. And now you'll change the location to my location and then tap back. And now you've got a widget with your weather on it. If you wanna remove the widget, you can press on it and hold it and you can click Remove Widget and it'll ask you, do you want to remove the widget? And you can just tap remove and the widget's gone. And you can put a lot of different widgets up on your, on your home screen. You can put photos, you can put the weather. There's just a number of different things you can use and I encourage you to take time. If you go in here, tap on the little plus up in the top left and look at all the things that you can put in there. You can put music, notes, photos, reminders, weather all different kinds of things on your home screen. And, um, and that's how you add a widget to your home screen. So the next tip I wanna give you is the, um, how to keep your iPad up to date. And you really need to do that. When Apple puts out an update, it's usually for security reasons or to add some new features. And it's, it's really worth it to, to, to make sure that your iPad is up to date. And how you do that is you tap on settings Go to general, go to software update, and make sure that automatic updates are turned on. So you wanna download the updates and install the updates. If you take that off, you can do that. 
if you take install it'll just download it but it won't install it for you and you'll have to remember to do that I think the best way is just to keep that on all the time and as you can see I have an iPad software up late to down, update to download and install myself and I'll be doing that soon and that's how you keep it up to date but I just can't stress how important it is to do that because sometimes there's security features sometimes there's little bugs in the in the iPad that drive you crazy and they'll get fixed in the background and if you have automatic updates on it'll automatically download it and then you can install the updates with the tap of a finger or sometimes it'll even auto update on its own and you're set and that's all there is to it and that is how you make sure that your iPad software is up to date all right the one bonus tip I want to give you and this is for people using the um, the base iPad. So I have a lot of fancy iPads and they have Face ID but what I'm using for this video is the base iPad and the base iPad has Touch ID and that's the little round home button and when you put your finger on it not pressing it to where it clicks but just resting your finger on it it reads your fingerprint ID and knows who you are and allows you to open up your iPad and use it. Usually when you set up your iPad initially you'll go through a part where where you'll add a fingerprint to it and you'll go on but I like to add a couple of different fingers to a uh, fingerprints to it because it's just easier to open if I always have to use my thumb to open it maybe I'm holding it with a different hand and I don't have that thumbprint in there so this is how you add another fingerprint to touch ID you go to settings you scroll down until you get to touch ID and passcode and you tap on that you have to enter your passcode in order to add a touch ID for security reasons so I'm going to do that and now I'm going to add a fingerprint and I'm going to place my finger on it and just lightly tap it until it reads my finger and then I'm going to hit continue and I'll adjust the grip and that way it kind of knows if you don't get your finger all the way on there. And now it's complete. And I've added an additional finger print to my reader. However you hold your iPad and most likely use it. I use both of my thumbs on my iPad so I like to get those two on there and I typically do that but occasionally I use my index fingers. The iPad is an awesome computer and the better you know how to use it the more you'll get out of it. And if you run into an issue, don't give up. You can't really break your iPad. Just take your time learning the iPad and frustration will turn to fun. I do hope this short tutorial taught you a few useful things. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.